Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about Markdown, which is a wonderful, powerful tool for your writing needs. Let's get started. So today's video is all about Markdown. This is really targeted at educators or anyone that needs to write documentation. This could be used for assignments. It could be used for notes. Uh, even if you're a student, it would be a great tool to take notes from lectures and, and things like that. So the first thing I'd like to do is point your attention toward markdownguide.org. And they have a great number of resources for helping you to learn all about Markdown and how you can use it. And so if we look at the first page here, what is Markdown? Markdown is a lightweight markup language that you can use to add formatting elements to plain text, text documents. And that's really important. You can write this with a simple text editor. And then uh, there are several options for how you can do that. It works across different platforms. If you scroll down, there's a little section on why use Markdown. It can be used for everything, websites, documents, notes, books, presentations, emails, and technical documentation. So for example, if you're an instructional designer working on technical courses, this could be a great tool to document some regular text alongside code. And I can talk about that later. Markdown is portable. It's platform independent. It's listed as future proof, meaning that because it's a simple text document, you can always find a way to read that. And it's everywhere. It's used in popular websites and it's used for documentation on the front page of your GitHub repos and uh, even in Microsoft Teams. So you can find many places where it's used and I'm sure you'll find a use for it in your professional career somehow. So with that said, one way that you can practice this is to use this website, Dillinger.io. I personally have not used it, but it looks like a great way to practice and get used to the environment. And you can see here in their default example, they already have set up for you a top level header, which uses the hashtag or pound sign, and then a second level header, which uses two of those. And then a third level header would use three and so on. Uh, they do some things with images, there's some text, there's some lists, so you can practice and check out this website if you'd like to learn more. What I would like to talk to you about is the assignment that I wrote with Markdown inside of the Quarto publishing system. So we have a title, we have some headers, and some text just underneath those headers. I was able to easily create a list. I was easily able to create a section with a definition and the term, so a little mini glossary here. I wanted to point out that um, the, the system with LaTeX is fantastic for math equations. So here we have a formula definition. Uh, below that we have a, a series of graphics and this one just lays out three different tree species. I went with some free silhouette graphics that I found online, but you can easily add images and caption those. Below you see a table. This is really, again, easy to make using text. So you don't have to draw it or, for example, with Word, go through a list of menus to figure out how to insert a table. You can simply write it with text directly into your document. So we'll take a look at that. Below, using the Quarto Markdown system, uh, you can integrate tools like Mermaid to draw diagrams. So again, if you were to think about how you might do this in Word or similar systems, you would have to create the graphic and then insert that. But here we can do that directly with text and edits are just as easy. So here we have a simple process that you might need to show to students or maybe a process internal to your company. So that's really handy and easy to do. You can also using the system that I have insert code blocks. And here we have a section called code review just something maybe where you might show students some code and what that might do. And I've written the same example using Python and R. So we have a simple linear plot drawn using Python and the matplotlib library. I would like to briefly point out that the matplotlib text here is formatted a little bit differently using backticks. So it stands out uh, as, a, as a monospace font. But then we have our code you might be able to see it has a very, very light gray bar next to it to provide some offset and some visual interest, but we can see the code itself and then we can see the rendered plot. This was all done inside of the document, so it wasn't an inserted graphic from another resource. It was done in line with the rest of this. And then we see the R example, same way, and for R it uses a lot less text and it uses R base graphics but we can see the same thing. So we have another 
linear plot here. And then finally, we have on this final page, uh, the assignment, which could be more details. I just wanted to use this as an opportunity to show the different levels of headers that could be used with it. So very simple. At this point, I'd like to jump in and take a look at the code behind the scenes for how I was able to do this with RStudio IDE, Quarto, and Markdown. So let's take a look. Behind the scenes, I'm in my RStudio IDE. I have a Quarto Markdown document, which is the default Quarto document. It's a .qmd as the extension, and I've just called my document markdown.qmd. And in this environment, you'll see a few things that you may have seen before if you watch my other videos, but we have a few documents uh, listed here in the file tree. <clears throat> so I'll just move this out of the way so we can focus on the actual background code. So at the top of our document, we have a little header. Uh, it gives a, a place for you to write your title. And that is what will show up at the very top of your document. There is a formatting section. I don't think the theme for this actually works with PDF, but if I were rendering this as HTML, it would work. So I'm actually gonna change this back to PDF uh, and get rid of that theme. So you can render this as HTML, by the way, I'm taking some extra steps here to make sure that it is in fact a PDF that can be distributed. But if you host this as a website, you can certainly use HTML and that opens up even more opportunities for some interaction and formatting. So in this document, we have a header and then we have some text. And again, this is really simple, but uh, using the, the pound sign here, you can create a top level header and then you just type whatever you want underneath that. Then I have some takeaways. The list here is created by using an asterisk or you can use uh, a dash sign like this. So those both will work and uh, you can create a list easily that way. There are also ways to create nested lists, ordered lists and mixed lists where you start it and then you have some text and then you continue it. So you can read more about those, but just know that it's easy to create a list inside of your document. The next section is key terms and to do a Def, uh, definition for the term, you can write the term and then on the line below it, use a colon and a space and then write your definition. So those are all relatively simple here. The next one is a little bit different because we're using a math formula, but the way that you do that is you can uh, wrap that formula inside of dollar signs. And that just tells the system that you're using a math environment for the moment. And you can see that it gives you a little pop-up to see what that looks like. But this is one of the areas where LaTeX really excels and it gives you uh, a very high degree of control over complex math equations. So if you're working on any type of course that uses math, this is great. Uh, and it looks really professional. And it's what engineers and scientists use as well. So this gives you access to those same tools. Next, we have uh, the section with the tree species graphic. And here I have a little offset section using these three colons. I have the layout specified, and then I have the vertical alignment of these images set to bottom so that they all appear nice and neat in, in the document. And with the standard image insertion code, we have uh, the exclamation point, and then in square brackets, we have the caption, and then in the parentheses, we have the image reference. So this image exists in our folder alongside this document. So you don't have to write the path to it, but you can just type the name of the image itself. So those all appear here. And then we close out that little section with the same three colons. And, and then that creates that uh, triple graphic with the, uh, with the captions. Below that, we have a section for supporting data. And as I mentioned, you can write a table directly into your document with text. There is a little bit more going on here than first meets the eye, but these colons with the, with the dashes actually specify that line underneath the header. And the colon here specifies the alignment of the text. So here we have a left aligned column. Under count, we have a right aligned column because these are uh, numbers. And then we go back to left aligned columns for more text information. And if you were to do a colon on both sides, you get centered text. So that's something that you can actually directly control very easily and read very easily in line with your document here. Below that, we have a colon and then we have the caption for the table, which will appear above the table as is standard. 
And then we have a series of options here that go inside of curly brackets. Now, currently I just have the column widths for the table set, but there are other options you can work with. Below that we have our diagram using Mermaid. So this is created with the little code chunk, which is indicated by three back ticks. And then we specify that this is a Mermaid code chunk inside of the brackets. And then here you can use a little notation to define the width of the figure, which is nice because otherwise it won't fit on the page. And then you can have some text to indicate that this is a left to right flowchart. If you dig into the documentation on Mermaid, you can learn more about that. But this is just one of their simple examples. I thought it would be good to show this as an example of a process that you might want to describe in your document. So because this is intended to be sort of an assignment, we can have the first step to be read the assignment and then you go to a small group discussion. Then you arrive at a decision and then we could have maybe a, a split here where we go to group selections and group rejections. But what you can see uh, in this are all of the, the nodes of the diagram and then all of the connections which are indicated by these arrows. So this is how you would draw that figure and it's all with text, so it's very easy to edit. The next section is code review. This is where I introduce two different types of code with Python and R. Again, these are indicated by code chunks, like I mentioned before, but now we specify that they are in Python and in R. So there's a little difference here. And then you would, in those code chunks, write whatever your Python or R syntax is. And so here, for Python, we need to import the matplotlib library and then plot that and then show it. And then for R, it's a little simpler, so you can just plot this vector and then make sure you specify the type to be a line. And that's all done for you. Below that, I have a page break. This is something that you can easily insert anytime you want to force that to happen. And so after the code, I inserted that. And then the last page is just that assignment page, which has its own top level header and then some secondary headers. What I would like to do is encourage all of the instructional designers and educators out there to try Markdown and see what you think about it in terms of its effectiveness and ease of use for generating documents that you can use in your classroom or to be distributed as part of an online course or something like that. I found it to be very helpful. And if you do in fact have a GitHub account, for writing any kind of code or sharing documents that way. You can also use Markdown directly on that uh, system to create the readme files that go along with all of your documents. So it's very handy and you may find that it appears in more systems than you realize. So add this to your toolkit and make sure you like, subscribe, and, uh, and stay tuned for more content on this channel. Every like and comment helps out. So thanks and have a great week. Take care. Bye.